Well, good morning and welcome to worship here at United in Christ Lutheran Church. We are so glad that you are here with us on this day as we continue this season after Pentecost. But as we celebrate here in this place, the completion of Vicar Katie's internship here with us this morning. We're very glad you're here. We're, actually, I think we're getting started right now. I'm going to hand you over to Terry and Maya here in the front and we'll be ready to go and worship. Thanks for being here. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to United in Christ Lutheran Church on this finally cool enough day to be gathered together in confidence and faith. Thank you for being here with us in worship this morning. Uh, thank you. As we gather today, uh, we do so with a couple of announcements to get us started with worship. Uh, first, uh, we tore down all of the Christmas trees from last week, but that didn't stop one of all y'all from dropping off an extra Christmas tree in the office this week. So first things first, Thank you to whoever it was. I think I might know Michelle here's looking at you. Uh, thank you for joining us in that service. And thank you, if, which is an advertisement as well. If you have more Christmas trees at home that you're ready to unload, you've got a place that's willing to receive them. So bring them on out, all right? Uh, and we'll be real set for Christmas this year. Uh, as well, a great big thank you to everyone who helped us move a bunch of secondhand or new to us furniture from the Synod office this week. Uh, we got it all done in like 80 minutes, door to door from the Synod office up here to the church building. It was a fabulous morning. Thank you to all of the many hands who made much lighter work of that process together. Really, you should have seen Randy and Jeff trying to handle the filing cabinet all the way down the stairs. It's a wonder we all still have our digits. Well done, guys. <laughs> uh, a couple of minutes as we look to the events of the next week ahead, uh, we are excited for a couple of cool opportunities. First, we've had a number of our students asking for a fun day here at the church this summer, uh, just a day to gather together and play some Pokemon together. And we are finally making that dream happen for some of our students. So, so tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., we're going to gather downstairs in the fellowship hall for any students who want to come out, bring your cards. We'll do some trading, bring your switch. We'll do some playing. I've even got the mats. We'll do some battles as well. All right. We'll put some TV on. It'll be a great morning all together. We'll look forward to joining in that tomorrow morning. Uh, if you come in as well a little later, you'll be able to join us for our worship and music meeting tomorrow at 1 p.m. Heck, if you come early to that meeting and you bring your Pokemon cards with you, Sharon, uh, you can join in the fun, all right? Uh, so that's a two-for-one stop tomorrow. Uh, a reminder that next Sunday after worship, our social ministry team will be meeting together. And that as well, uh, next Sunday afternoon at 4 p.m., we'll be gathering together with our neighborly Lutherans from the area for a game up at the Williamsport Crosscutters. Uh, we have 60 people going to the game from between the, four con the three congregations. Uh, so we're looking forward to that time together, uh, that game. That, again, that game is at 4 p.m. next Sunday. Uh, and if you ordered your tickets already, they are in your mailboxes here in the building. So please be sure to pick those up on your way out from worship today. Uh, as we look a little farther out, uh, we're excited to bring back our Communion Day celebration, uh, which is a day when we gather together with our students here in this place uh, to learn about what it is that we do here around the Lord's table, uh, what it is we do here during the Eucharist. Uh, and so if you have a student who is interested in joining us as a First Communion Sunday, or perhaps who would just like to re-up on their understanding, we invite you to join us on Thursday, August 10th, and we're all, we're, we're, where we will gather together at 10 a.m. here at the building, uh, but we will be going on some field trips as we get to know tactfully and tangibly how it is that these elements arrive here at our table. Uh, if you have any questions about that, please touch base with me after worship or send me an email sometime in the week ahead, and we'll get you connected. 
Uh, this is very cool. A new group has started here at the church. Uh, an impromptu walking group has started up. If you would like to join them to get your daily steps in, they meet together on Monday and Thursday evenings at 6 p.m. down at Milton State Park down on the island. Uh, you can touch base with that, one of them as part of that process. Yes, John. Once more, like last week, John would like to give thanks and acknowledge the veterans here in this place. So if you could give John a quick wave, thank you very much for your service in this place. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And if you missed any of those announcements, you can be sure to check your monthly newsletter, which you should have received in your emails this past weekend, or that you should have received in your mailboxes. Uh, again, please be sure to pick those up on your way out from worship today uh, as you make your way out of this place. And finally, and last but surely far from least, today we gather together to give thanks and to celebrate the completion of Vicar Katie's internship here at United in Christ. Uh, it is going to be a day of much celebration as we give thanks to God for her ministry in and through this place over the past year together. Um, as a reminder, Vicar Katie's going to take some time off after this, so she's going to disappear for a little while, so be sure to offer your thanks to her today. But as well, be sure to stop in downstairs in the fellowship hall, where we're going to keep the celebration going here after worship this morning uh, with some time together and some good fellowship and some good well treats along the way and I'm sure some extra surprises as well so please be sure to stick around after worship but thank you in advance for everything you have done and continue to do in and through this place and with that I'm going to shut up because it's her last Sunday here this morning so I think she should be on the hook for just about the entire rest of the service what do you think <laughs> great then I'm going to go sit down with only my thanks for you being here this morning Thank you for being present to be a part of this process, one with another. Our service this morning begins with the prelude, followed by the confession and forgiveness. For now, though, I ask simply that you remain seated, that we take this time to center ourselves for worship, that we can breathe in the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place, so that when we leave this place, we do so with newfound joy and hope and strength and encouragement to continue seeking God and serving God in all that we do. Thank you for being here this morning. Please rise in body, air, and spirit. 
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We have hurt our community. We have squandered your blessings. We have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers a bunless grace when we fail. God, claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We now sing our opening hymn in number 533, Open Now Thy Gates of Beauty, found on page 4 of the bulletin. our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy. Live according to it and grow in faith and hope and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Romans chapter 8, verses 26 to 39. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he, excuse me, and those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who will intercede for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Would you please rise? Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid, and then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search, and fi in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered yes, and he said to them, Therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. And if any of our students would like to join me up front in the parade ground. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good How are you? I'm good. Good. So glad that you're here. While the rest of our friends are joining us up front, do you guys know 
what a kingdom is. Have you heard of the word kingdom? Yeah, what do you think a kingdom is? Um, it's like, yeah, it here. it's like what? A snake. Oh, it's, it sounds like a snake? Mm -hmm. Maybe. What else? What? Have you guys heard the word kingdom? We just heard it a couple different times in the story. Mm -hmm. Kingdom is a place that someone rules over, usually a king or a queen. They are in charge of the land, and we hear in today's story. There were monsters. Oh, there could be monsters, but not in this one, because <laughs> it's the kingdom of heaven. You've heard of heaven, right? You've heard of heaven? God says, the, I know. God says that the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. Have you guys ever seen a mustard seed? Yeah? No? I have one with me right here. Can you see it? No. Can you see it? Yeah. Is it big? Is it a big seed? What is it? That's a mustard seed. How, how big is it? How small is it? It's teeny tiny. And God says that this seed grows into a huge bush that becomes a tree. Isn't that tiny? Do you think a big tree could come from this? No? You guys are looking at me like I'm crazy. And you'd be right, because I feel crazy. Look at how small that is. But that's what the kingdom of heaven does. It creates brand new things, and it transforms them. And that's what God does for us. God takes really small things and makes it really big and really beautiful. And that's what the kingdom of heaven is like. So can you guys remember that? When every time, maybe next time you see a really small seed, or the next time you hear the word kingdom and maybe think of monsters that could be really big. Monster, you have, big? Yeah, you could remember that God and loves I, us, God protects us, and God uh, invites I, us into the kingdom. But God protects us from the monsters. God is bigger than the boogeyman. <laughs> He's bigger than Godzilla. <laughs> we could keep going. <laughs> Those holes. The kingdom of heaven looks really different. And we don't always know what to expect, but we always can trust that God loves us and God cares for us. I've lost their attention. I've got a couple things to do before we go back to our seats. What do you think they are? Pray. Get candy. Dip our hands in the water. Show off our cool watch to our friends. And our coloring pages. So let's, let's fold our hands and bow our heads because it helps us when we pray. Dear God, you show us that the kingdom of heaven comes in so many different ways. It can be as small as a mustard seed. It could be as beautiful and treasured as a secret treasure or a pearl. Help us to remember that you love us and that you are making a place for us in your kingdom. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, let's get some candy and some coloring sheets. And if you want, you can sit in the playground. Well, it's up to your parents, really, is what it is. <laughs> and the couple questions that you can answer. What is God's treasure? You know, we hear about a treasure in the field. Or there's a blank space for you guys to draw what God's kingdom looks like. Yes, you can have it. It's yours. I think we're set on everything. He can do it. He can. I don't You want to read my sermon for me? No? Okay. You going to go sit down? You can sit next to Pastor Justin. When I was little, I used to imagine God's kingdom as some type of mystical castle, maybe with monsters, up in the clouds. And every time we talked about the kingdom of heaven in church, I imagined God behind a moat and stone walls with a drawbridge that was closed, and it was not easily accessed. The kingdom of heaven, in my mind, was set apart and inaccessible. It was the stereotypical kingdom where the monarch remained tucked away from their people, and the general populace had no idea what was happening behind those castle walls. In this imagined setting, the kingdom of heaven is isolated, and God cannot be glimpsed behind those walls. 
I'm sure I imagined it this way because we so often talk about God as Lord and King. And if heaven is a kingdom, then surely it's what I've seen in history books. However, what Jesus tells us is something wildly different. No, instead this morning we hear that the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. It's like yeast, like buried treasure buried in a field. It's like a merchant in search of fine pearls, like a net filled with both fish good to eat and rotten fish, as the Greek says. And that's a far cry from a posh castle in the clouds. Each of these parables are unexpected, surprising, and present the kingdom of heaven with very little fanfare. These short parables can be grouped together in pairs that illustrate the similar points using different language. Both the mustard seed and the yeast start small, unassuming, and they help grow into something large and abundant. Once mustard takes root, it's more of a weed really than a shrub, and once it takes root, it spreads and spreads. And for Matthew, this humble bush becomes large and sturdy enough to house birds. A tiny amount of yeast is all that it takes for bread to rise and become leavened. Something unassuming and ordinary can change one's whole life. God routinely shows up in these unexpected places. And so it's no surprise that God's kingdom does as well. The treasure in the field and the pearl discovered by the merchant are the next two groups together. They're stories that have someone stumbling across an unexpected fortune. The kingdom of God comes to us unexpectedly. Whether we're searching for it or not, And the kingdom is a treasure, an investment worthy of everything that we have. The kingdom of heaven is valuable, and it grows wildly from something unexpected and small. The final part of the parable feels a little less comfortable. Righteous and wicked will be separated out from one another, and will be thrown into the furnace of fire, and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Oh, I don't like it. (laughs) But at least the imagery of the fish is a little bit more comfortable. It's like, oh, we'll we'll catch all of them, and we'll just throw the bad ones back. And the promise and the surprise in that is that God casts a wide net, a wide net that all fish pour into good and bad. And there's no separation before that designated time. Eventually, evil and sin will be separated out by Jesus and the angels. But Jesus doesn't dwell on this. And as we're reminded by Paul in Romans today, for I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God through Jesus Christ. Jesus transforms our lives Not through scaring us, but by helping us to know that the kingdom is close at end, and it is a treasure that appears in the ordinary and the everyday. I know that often the gospel reminds me of a story that can be shared with you. However, this week I was not able to find one that I felt fit. So I decided to try my hand at coming up with my own parable. It's not nearly as pithy or counterculture as the ones we hear from Jesus this morning, but I hope it holds still a similar hope and revelation. The kingdom of heaven is like a small church in a small town in Pennsylvania that opens itself to all people. It is a place of learning and unending patience, especially for the vicar who said she was nervous during the children's sermon. (laughs) The kingdom of heaven is like the church on a hill that wholly welcomes all people as they are and eagerly looks for any opportunity to get to know you more. It has been a joy to serve as your intern for this last year. United in Christ was an unexpected gift for me. Some of you might not know this, United in Christ was not my first internship site. I was slated to go on internship in the fall of 2021 serving a different congregation. And I actually had moved to that congregation and to that location, and I had started working in that office on a provisional basis. 
I had not been formally endorsed by my uh, candidacy committee, which is the second of three check-ins to determine whether or not you are on track for ordination. And once I had started this other internship, I met with my candidacy committee and I was postponed. I was not cleared by my candidacy committee to continue with that internship and I was asked to take the semester off to rest, reset, and refresh. I was furious. I was blindsided, hurt. You name whatever emotion, I was probably feeling it. And I moved back home, and so I worked in that fall semester before going back to ULS in the spring. I had to repeat the, new, the interview process once again for a new internship site. Still bitter that I was not on internship as I should have been. And then I got the nicest email from one Pastor Justin <laughs> to interview for a church in a town that I had never heard of before. And would you believe me if I tell you that that interview is nearly two hours? <laughs> nearly double the amount of time for most interviews. <laughs> and when I got off that Zoom call, I texted a friend as I was going into a class and asked, is it possible to have a crush on a church? <laughs> I was excited for the possibility and hoped that you all would like me too. Well, clearly it was mutual, so we're good. <laughs> we matched. <laughs> and I started in the following August. I have been blown away time and time again by the folks here. Not because my expectations were low, but just because my expectations were so high and you managed to surpass them each and every time. I've been blown away by you guys through time and care that are put into every single ministry. And in time and care in the ways that you make everyone who comes through your doors feel welcome and included. Like the mustard seed united has, in Christ has quietly planted itself inside of me. I have learned what it means to be in community, and I'm learning to figure out what my pastoral role in that community looks like. I have been offered the grace to try new things and to learn alongside you the tried and true methods. United in Christ has been an unexpected treasure found in the field, and I am so grateful we have been called together. Through many parables, Jesus tells us what the kingdom of heaven is like. God's kingdom is a wonderful surprise, and even when we think we've begun to understand, another facet of it is revealed to us, and we're surprised yet again. The kingdom of heaven is here. It is appearing to us in the most unexpected places, in the most unexpected of times, whether or not we're looking for it, whether or not we've opened ourselves to it. We'll never really know the full scope of God's kingdom on this side of the resurrection. But even if it's a fraction of how it is here at United in Christ, I can't wait to experience it in its fullness. Because the kingdom of heaven is like United in Christ, a church with open doors and a far extending reach seeking to do God's work in the world. Amen. Um, please rise as we sing our hymn of the day, Be Thou My Vision, found on page 9 of the bulletin.
let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. Almighty God, we pray for the church and all servants of the gospel, equipped, rostered, and lay ministers to proclaim that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Form confirmants and catechism into disciples. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious God, we pray for the well-being of creation, safeguard the environment, clean polluted rivers and lakes, preserve the mighty tree and the tiny mustard seed, and send advocates for sustainable practices. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, we pray for the nations, instill in all who govern the ability to discern between good and evil. Free those who are oppressed and protect those facing danger. Promote peace across the world and in our towns and neighborhoods. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Merciful God, we pray for all in need. Protect those fleeing from war. Shelter any who are in poverty. Clothe the naked and soothe all who grieve. And heal the sick, especially those we name unto you at this time. For Shirley, for Mary, for Mark. For these people we pray and for those we feel within our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy, Your mercy is great. Holy God, we pray for this congregation, both those gathered today and those absent from our assembly. Grant safety to travelers and refreshment and safety for children attending summer camps or community programs. Give direction to any experiencing life transitions. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for your saints who now rest from their labors. Inspire us by their witness to treasure the gospel and continually nourish us with your grace. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray in the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of that peace with one another. Peace be with you, Marilyn. <laughs>
of prayer. As we prepare for this morning's offering, please know that we remain grateful for all of the ways. Yeah, you're the only one left standing, Vicar. I don't know what that says. Thank you. Thank you. Super prayer for this morning's offering. We remain grateful for all of the ways in which you financially partner with us here at United in Christ. Whether it's by using offering envelopes here in the building, uh, or whether it's by using our online offering plate through Tithe. Uh, which you can access with the QR code either in the bulletin or in the inserts in the pews in front of you. However it is you, you partner with us, we remain grateful for your support of God's ministry through this place. Well, at this time, then, we will prepare to receive this morning's offering. Mm -hmm. giver of all good things. Sustain us through the gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us, that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. 
So with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who, on the cross, opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. To whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we are bold to pray as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Here at United in Christ, we understand that this invitation to communion is Christ's invitation. And thus, all who are gathered here are welcomed at this table. We invite you to come forward in the center aisle, making two lines, to take a glass on your way forward, and then to receive the bread and to receive the wine, and to return to our seats by the side aisles, placing our empty glasses in the trays as you go. Should you need or prefer, we do have grape juice and gluten-free wafers available. Please just let us know as you come forward. But all people are called to Christ's table. Come, eat what is good. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Thank you, Alan. Mercy on us, Lamb of God. Thank you, Bob. You're welcome, sir. The sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us. This is the body of Christ given for you. And may you, no matter where you are gathered, know the blessings of Almighty God going with you this day and always. Amen. Ken, this is the body of Christ given for you. Ben, this is the body of Christ given for you. Kim, this is the body of Christ given for you. You know, this is the body of Christ given for you. Jack, this is the body of Christ given for you. Bonnie, this is the body of Christ given for you. Mary Lou, this is the body of Christ given for you. Carol, this is the body of Christ given for you. Bob, this is the body of Christ given for you. Herb, this is the body of Christ given for you. 
can. This is the body of Christ given for you. Randy, this is the body of Christ given for you. Sarah, this is the body of Christ given for you. Kristen, this is the body of Christ given for you. Gwen, this is the body of Christ given for you. Grant, this is the body of Christ given for you. Julie, this is the body of Christ given for you. Grady, this is the body of Christ given for you. Jeff, this is the body of Christ given for you. Jared, this is the body of Christ given for you. Rosemary, this is the body of Christ given for you. So this is the body of Christ given for you. Maybe this is the body of Christ given for you. Cammy, this is the body of Christ given for you. Cheryl, this is the body of Christ given for you. Dale, this is the body of Christ given for you. Nancy, this is the body of Christ given for you. <laughs> Charlie got stuck. Hell, this is the body of Christ given for you. <laughs> Colby, this is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the body of Christ given for you. Wade, this is the body of Christ given for you. Nicole, this is the body of Christ given for you. Trudy, this is the body of Christ given for you. Jordy, this is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. Ruby, this is the body of Christ given for you. Thank you. Body of Christ given for you. Bob, I got one. I got one. Yep. Sorry. Marilyn, this will be the blood of Christ shed for you. Thank you, Al. Body of Christ given for you. Al, this is the body of Christ given for you. Scarlet, this is the body of Christ given for you. Bob, this is the body of Christ given for you. That's right. Maddie, this is the body of Christ given for you. And Talia, can you remember how much God loves you and has promised to always love you no matter what? Amen. Coda, this is the body of Christ given for you. Michelle, this is the body of Christ given for you. Okay, this is the body of Christ given for you. you Layla, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Al, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. I like grape I've got your number, Maddie. I like grape No, I got you. I got you. There you go. Do you, did you get a glass? Oh, okay. It's right behind her. Right there. That's all right. 
Scarlet, do you have a glass? Scarlet, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And Maddie, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Coda, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. It's okay. It'll come out. Michelle, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. I know. I don't know. Katie, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. She'll be okay. It's okay. Please rise in, rise in spirit or in body. <laughs> May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in Christ's grace. Amen. Amen. Thankful hearts and voices raise. Tell everyone what God has done. Let all who seek the Lord rejoice. Bear Christ's holy name. Send us with your promises, O Lord, and lead us forth in joy with shouts of thanksgiving. time I'm going to invite Vicar Katie, well you're already up front, but to come around front <laughs> as we prepare to give thanks for her gift among us at the conclusion of her internship. Katie, on August 7th your internship began here with us of United in Christ where we welcomed you to be the intern in this place to observe, participate in, and lead in the full stretch of gospel ministry among us. With the gospel, you have comforted us in times of sickness and in trouble and at the death of our loved ones. Sharing our joys and sorrows, you have been important to our life together in the Church of Jesus Christ, in service to this community, and in God's mission to this world. As you leave this community of faith for a time, may we say farewell and we pray for God's blessing. People of God, members and friends of United in Christ, do you release Katie from service as your intern? We do, and we give thanks to God for our ministry together. And Katie, do you accept and recognize the completion of your internship with United in Christ? I do, and I give thanks to God for our ministry together. Let us pray. Almighty God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you gave the holy apostles many gifts, and commanded them to feed your flock. You equip your people with abilities that differ according to the grace given to them, and you call them to various avenues of service. We give you thanks for the ministry of Katie among the people of God in this place. You watch over our going out and our coming in. Bless this time of ending and beginning. You surround your people in every time and place. Keep us close in your love. You accompany your people in times of joy and times of trial. Prosper all that has been done to your glory in this time together. Heal and forgive all that has fallen short of your will for us. Help Katie and all of us to live with courage and gladness in the future you have given to us. As she has been a blessing to us, so now send her forth to be a blessing to others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen.
May the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. May we give thanks for the gift of this internship. Don't forget to stick around as we continue to offer more thanks downstairs in the fellowship hall this morning. But for now, let us go singing our sending hymn, which has a number on some page in the bulletin. You'll find it, I'm sure. the spangled heavens infinite in time and place flung the suns in burning radiance through the silent fields of space we your children in your likeness share inventive powers with you great creator still creating show us what we yet may do we have ventured worlds undreamed of since the childhood of our race know the ecstasy of winging through untraveled realms of space probe the secrets of the atom yielding on Facing us with life's destruction or our most triumphant. She's saw Oppenheimer this week. <laughs> Beckons made it count just a new children of creative power. <laughs> Others honoring you. May our dreams prove rich and desperate. <laughs> For well begun, great creator, give us guidance till our Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God.